Good evening and welcome everyone. It's John the Net Guy and today is Tech on Tuesday number eight. This is a very special episode. So you can see down here it's death, taxes, and data loss. <laughs> Three things in life that uh, are unavoidable. That said, I'm going to help you out with, well, at least one of them, maybe two. If you lose your tax file, that could be really bad. I'm going to show you several different products and they're all designed to help keep your data safe and protected. I see a few of you guys are already joining. I'm going to let the Amazon guys in here in just one sec. I have to warn you, Amazon does not let me send you to other websites. <laughs> so I can't send you anywhere else to shop or do something, which is understandable. That's Amazon, right? And so I'm going to show you this case, which is what my Unraid configuration is in for all of my studio files, personal files, media center, all that stuff goes into this thing. I'm going to show you the case and then we're going to drop and ditch the Amazon people, but stick around. I want you to see my Unraid setup. I want you to talk about it. We're going to hang out in the chat. It's going to be real low key, but I'm going to kick the Amazon guys out before I talk about that. Cause I'm going to teach you how to download it and do all that cool stuff. So I see some, uh, happy smiling faces that are here. Uh, rare apple. Welcome. Thank you for the, uh, I think I saw you on the wise forum earlier today. So that's awesome. So I'm going to let the Amazon guys in first, get that carousel going like they like me to. If you do want to follow me on Amazon, that will really help me get to the next level to the next tier in Amazon, which would be really cool. I could use that. Um, then I can do some other shows. I've got, believe it or not, I've got a cooking show coming up. Not uh, cooking just like I'm going to teach you how. Maybe we'll do a little of that. But it's actually going to be cooking tech. I've got some really cool stuff. Uh, sous vide, sous vide, whatever you call it. So um, keep following me. You're going to get some really, really neat stuff in here. And I'm going to go into the stream now. And we're going to hit on our first product. And we're going to let the people in to Tech on Tuesday number eight. Welcome Amazon shopper. It's John, the net guy. This is tech on Tuesday. Number eight. We are going to be doing a show on death taxes and data loss. <laughs> if you've been here, you know what this show is all about. I bring cool tech to you, show you what's neat, what you should have in your stable. And one of the things that I love about today is it's really personal for me, personable, per personal for me. I can't tell you how many times I get those crying phone calls from parents whose kids lost files in my own life. You know, my grandpa, he died from esophageal cancer and we're lucky. We had some time with him. We took lots of pictures, did that. And the hard drive that they were on failed and those pictures were lost permanently. So our lives are digital. Now you got to take care of your digital assets. <laughs> so I'm going to show you some neat products today. I've got a bunch of them from really consumer based to just really wild. I've even got stuff that can back up your cell phone. So that's a pretty cool thing. I want to pull that up in the carousel first. If you haven't been here before, I'm going to show you guys how you can follow along on the other services as well. The URL, which I normally put down in the corner down there over here will come up soon. That's my Amazon shop. <laughs> and so that's a pretty cool way to do it. I'm also going to show you what my Amazon shop looks like. It's always fun because we're live and we kind of see this mirror effect. So tech on Tuesday, number eight is right here. And you're going to see a kind of a sneak peek of what we got coming up And the first item. Super duper, duper simple is just a simple USB key. They're getting so cheap now. Now, unfortunately the stock on all of this stuff has been in and out and in and out of stock. And so I've been kind of chasing the rabbit here all week for you. The good news is if you don't see something in stock, I've got you the links to these other items, but my number one pick for this is this Samsung fit drive. Now these are tiny, tiny, little bit bigger. They're not that big. Trust me. <laughs> it looks huge on the screen. They're just a tiny little bit bigger than the plug end of the, the key here. And they go up to 256 gigabytes, which is about the normal size that you would get in a MacBook Air. You know, my, uh, Macs have been notoriously stingy on their storage. And this is a great product for backing up with Time Machine on a Mac, a Windows PC. So I'm going to take this key that I have right here, which I've backed up a few things on. And we're going to just do a crystal. Oh, I actually had to format it. So <laughs> this one is brand new. I'm going to do a crystal disk mark on it. And this is just a real simple program that lets you benchmark. Now I'm going to crank this down because we don't have all day to wait here. 
but I'm going to let that run in the background here and we can kind of see how fast this drive is. And in most cases, these are going to get between 250 and 300 megabytes a second read, write speeds slower, somewhere between 30 and 50 or 60, which is normal. This is a really, really good option uh, as, you know, a $9 gift. I think it was $11 when I put it in here. Uh, you can go up to the 128 for 22 or 37.98 here. So, want to call out a couple people in the chat. Hey, this bites for you. Iggy's made it. <laughs> One of my other favorite YouTube uh, creators. He's joined us here. That's awesome. Thank you for joining. Andrew coming to us from California. Thank you. And Randy J says the problem is most devices day before we do die before we do. Yeah, that is a problem. Now we're doing this benchmark here and you'll notice that when I get to these lower numbers, they're getting smaller, you know, performance wise, this is megabytes per second. And that's normal. This is for random reads and random writes. So they're real small files versus large chunks. These devices are not meant for really primary storage. They are fast. They're getting really fast. That read speed is a couple times what a spinning hard drive does these days. Write speeds on this one I've seen faster, but for a USB 3 that's super compatible, and I think it was $11 when I put it in the cart here for the show, not bad at all. So definitely like that product. That would be my first recommendation. Let's head back out here. And I want to point out just a couple things about it here real quick. This is the actual size, so it's going to look enormous on screen. But that is how small it is, and it does come with this eyelet, I believe. Uh, if not, if you have a set of keys from 1980, you can totally use that. <laughs> All these cars nowadays, they're getting the, the no key fobs or whatever, you know, but this is awesome to carry around with you. Keep it in your book bag. Great for kids. Super, super product. I, again, recommend anybody have at least one of the solutions we have tonight. And we're going to go mild to wild again. I'm going to bring the really cool stuff out here soon. So that's this guy. Again, super small. That would be great if you're going to be uh, backing up a PC. Now, what about your phone? Now, this other product, I can tell you, I was introduced to it a few, gosh, three years ago, four years ago. My uncle lives in an area with really bad internet. We're talking like one megabit, three megabits. And he was using a cell phone with a metered data plan. And so he's like, John, you got to do something. I can't back up to iCloud. I got lots of pictures. I got lots of documents. I want to back up my PC and ding, 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 my iPhone. <laughs> so I'm like, hmm, that's a challenge. Challenge accepted, right? And for the longest time, Apple was preventing you from using this next item. Now I'm gonna pull it up on the carousel here. This is from PNY. I'm also gonna pull it up here in Amazon so you can see it. And this is really slick. This is probably one of my favorite items of the show just because the price is good. If you're in the iPhone ecosystem, I would totally have no problem recommending this. So this is a double-ended USB key. And the one end on, on the smart end here, with the lightning connector goes into your phone. The other end with the USB three connector goes into your PC. Now you can use it as a charging cable in a pinch. That was something I didn't expect. I've got the 128 gig version myself right here. And that has been awesome. Um, you can also get them in smaller increments, but with iPhones, you can, you know, do a lot of really cool stuff with this. Uh, Kren saying fun thing with the tiny USB three, six, they can get quite hot with either limits performance or the lifespan. That's true. So yeah, they're definitely not, I think, for permanent. I can tell you, I've got a couple of those small USB sticks deployed at customer sites. So some of my friends that have businesses, they're like, hey, we need a backup of whatever, a couple gigs a night. I threw a USB key in the front of it and said, hey, we'll just write a script that copies it every night. So those are cool things you can do as kind of a local backup. So yeah, great point. So I wouldn't use them as a, a normal drive. But speaking of, we got to do a quick break here for... Get out of your mates. <laughs> our Aussie connection gave us a good day and I, I neglected. So Cran, thank you and welcome so much. That's awesome to see you here. I'm going to show you guys how this works with an iPhone. And this has always been kind of funny because I use this. This is my show phone. I don't, this is, this is the wife phone <laughs> when I talk to her and this is the show phone. I don't want to get in trouble. So I use this one, but I was looking at it and I'm like, how am I going to show you this and how it works? when my usual connector to show it runs through the dock connector and it wasn't going to work, but Hey, 
things are as they may, I was actually able to come up with a solution to this. Introduce you to my Apple TV on AirPlay. <laughs> so this is my Apple TV here uh, that I'm now AirPlaying. I'm going to pull this special out of the way. We'll talk about the special coming up. And I'm literally going to insert this dongle into where the power connector goes. Now, you can't be powered while it's inserted. I just want to show you what happens. It's asking to communicate with this. Now, I've already got the app installed, but if you didn't have the app installed or if one of your family members didn't have the app installed, if your tech support... Oh, great. Let's remind me later on that update. Uh, so, But if you didn't have that, this pops up immediately. So you're, there's no walking through like, okay, go to the app store, type in this, try to remember your password, do all that kind of stuff. It literally pops it right up. And this is the duo link right here. Now, I don't have a lot of files. Like I said, this is my bat phone. No, this is my, my phone for demos and show only. But if I go into here, I can go to backup. I can say phone backup and I can start a backup right there by just hitting that. It's going to back up all of the photos from the photo app. There we go. So zero files were in this photo app. I do have some, some ones that I can show you. I can do a contacts backup. Now I backed up my contacts on this thing not too long ago. It actually, uh, I used my other phone. And because I belong to a large enterprise, there was like 3,000 contacts. It did it in a couple minutes, and it puts it out in a VCF file, so vCard format. So you can actually import that into almost anything. A couple things I have to point out that are just wicked cool about this. So we can go to file management. This works both directions. So <laughs> I had these pictures taken. Yes, that's me and my son Maverick. And we were practicing our YouTuber uh, guppy face there. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty cool and let me pull out the presentation mode if i can go sideways here okay and i have my show thumbnail from the show that i copied to the usb key so that came right from phone to usb key no bandwidth was harmed in any of that so you don't have to pay to iCloud, you don't have to pay to OneDrive, you don't have to pay to Google, you don't have to pay to anybody else. This one is 128 gigs. I saw the, the thing in the chat, Andrew. Um, so yeah, 128 gigs on this one, and it works for iOS devices. So some of you guys are like, what about my whatever, Mac <laughs> that only has Thunderbolts? I've got one of those. Macs has got four Thunderbolt connectors and a million docks. Um, it will, there is a version that works for that that's coming up next. So I, if you're on an Android device, don't think I left you out. So browsing, super easy on this. You've got phone or duo link at the bottom. You can go into the last backup I took. You can see the dates of the backup. You can see the pictures I took. And from my other iPhone, we've got screenshots here. And this was the wise light strip that I showed you a couple weeks ago. That's the badge that I saved a screenshot for, for a related video. And then this is the pricing on one of those cameras that I showed you. So you can see that these screenshots are in there. I can go back and I can go to AI dot. This is another webcam that I showed you a couple weeks ago, and there's the file that it took. And so it's backing up all of the images. Now you can do files and some other stuff. Apple does have some limitations on all that stuff. That's just their, their sandbox. We play in it. Right. Um, but the next product that I'm going to show you does really, really good at that. So I'm just going to check the chat real quick on Amazon. I'm double phoning it here hey serene welcome you are entered by the way serene in the next drawing as well we also have you in this drawing uh trifo again we're giving away tonight this is the drawing and the giveaway for the emma robot vacuum so stick around we're going to do that after i get through these usb keys let's do it in like one more product that'll be pretty cool and then obviously my contacts back up and some other stuff is there so unplug this that's gone and it's just warning me to, you know, to make sure that I have the app or the uh, device installed for it to work. But I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to take it over to my PC here because I want to show you how that works. So I showed you those pictures that were on here. <laughs> I see a late entry on the drawing. I've got a, a late entry request. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> we'll do that. Now, as soon as I plugged it in, you can see the pop up here. So those images that I was just looking at, if I open them here. There is Maverick again in the creepiest face swap that I've done. Please don't screenshot that for Discord. <laughs> now I know what I look like if I'm a three-year-old, right? Uh, or in a three-year-old's body. <laughs> hey, Robert, welcome. Thanks for joining the show. So we're taking a look right now, if you're just joining on Amazon, at the Duo Link from PNY. This is a 128-gig backup solution 
no bandwidth required, no data plan, no nothing. You can use it on multiple devices too. That's another thing I should point out. If you have multiple devices, it totally puts in, don't totally screenshot that, it totally puts them in different folders. So you can use this with multiple devices up to that. Uh, Seahawks1514 is asking for giveaway details. That was in the last show. But I'm going to honor it. Uh, I'm going to enter you guys. If you're in the Amazon chat, you call it out. I will honor that. Uh, just make sure that you send me an email to john at the netguy.com, subject line Emma. And then whatever you want to put in the body, uh, make sure you do that so I can be all legit with the rules. But the people that I see in here, I would totally do that. And I think some of the people in the Amazon chat have actually won things in the past. This is really awesome. And again, there's my show thumbnail, and it's on that, that computer or that drive. So all in all, this one works. The performance of it, uh, I actually tested a little bit earlier. This one is not going to be as performant as the first product, the Samsung that we looked at. And that's just common. You know, this thing's doing a lot more. It's USB 3 as well. The read and write speeds are not as fast, but this thing's doing double duty. And literally, like I told you, you can take this little short cable that we've got going here, and I can plug the iPhone in right now, and it will charge from the computer or whatever USB you've got, which is really wicked cool. So this little tiny, <laughs> Randy's pointing out that was a photo at church. Yes, I was the nursery attendant at our church. Uh, subject line to enter Seahawks is Emma, E-M-M-A, -M -M -A, and that's from the Trifo Company robot vacuum. This is the Emma Pet Vacuum. It's got pet hair removal, uh, a mopping capability, really cool stuff that I showed last week. I will put out an Amazon video soon for that so you guys can, can see that as well. So that's the regular read-write speed, so a little bit slower than other places. And I'm going to run us over to Amazon again and look at this. So again, $45.99 for this product, which is a great deal. <laughs> it's not... Uh, I think it's... More expensive than the next product I'm going to show you that's for Android, but most iPhone stuff is more expensive than Android. But I picked the largest one I could get, and I had it shipped here. It was here in one day on this product. So, again, there's no excuse. If you're on Amazon right now, or if you're on one of those other services, scroll down. Go to my Amazon shop. Go to the links that you see there. Excuse me one second. I had to cough. I didn't want to do that in your ears. Scroll down and click on this from PNY, the Duo link. Buy this as a gift for your parents. If they're iPhone people, this is the coolest thing that you can give them and super easy to use and super peace of mind. Uh, as a, a phone user and somebody that takes lots of digital pictures, I'm excited about this almost more than anything we've got tonight. Lots of people in the Amazon. Thank you guys for joining. We're taking a look at the PNY. This is the Duo Link, and it's a backup device for both your computer and your cell phone and lets you charge your cell phone. That's what they're showing here is you can literally charge it as like a charging cable. So if you just put this in your bag, your pocket, this would be the sweetest gift that you could get. So like I said, I got cool stuff. This is only product number two tonight of the products that we're going to show, and it's going to go mild to wild. There's even cooler stuff coming, but I love this one here. And uh, I see a message that I'm going to pull up here. <laughs> so from one of our friends... I have a Samsung Fit USB 3.0 drive as my Unraid boot drive. And guess what? I have one down there. <laughs> I have one as well. That's what we're going to show later. If you're going to stick around, I am going to have to cut the Amazon fo folks off early just because of some rules so that you guys can see how my Unraid works, how a YouTuber that's making, you know, basically a terabyte a month of footage backs it all up. Uh, very cool stuff that I'm going to show you there. So I'm excited about that, but we're going to drop the Amazon people before we go there. I am going to show you the case. I'm going to show you all the stuff that's in it, the drives that I use. So all that's going to be shown today. So we were just looking at the PNY 128 gig. It's about $45.99. Really, really cool product. Highly recommend that if you have iPhone users in the family. I'm going to show you guys on the carousel. No, that's me. <laughs> show you guys on the product carousel over here what it looks like and i'm going to take a quick break and we'll scan the chat real quick jc mama three she's in here i think you won one of the monitor stands from a prior show didn't you let me know in the amazon chat if jc if you were the one that won that i can't remember i know i shipped one to oregon one to georgia and a few other places so this is the pny 128 gig now you guys were asking about android <laughs> I do actually have Android devices. I'm not, you know, against Android. I just, 
you know, I like the iPhone and are kind of an iPhone family. So this is my show Android. This is a Pixel 3, I believe. Gosh, don't get me even like tested on that. And it's again, really just to bring up apps. Like I've got my Wise app and there's my backyard right now in Wise and it doesn't rotate for some reason. So that was a Wise cam that I showed you guys a while ago. And so let's say I want to back this device up. That's going to be the next product up. We're going to skip through these. This one's even bigger, and it's really, really cool. Now, when I say bigger, I mean storage-wise, but what's cool about it, these guys have made such cool tech now. So this is from SanDisk. Now, I'll show you this real close. So this is the dual drive USB Type-C. So if you're on one of the newer Androids in the last five years, probably, you know, this thing has a little tiny hole there for maybe a lanyard. doesn't come with one. And then this little slider, but check this out. There is your type A. There's your type C. Center is protected. You can throw that in your pocket and lose it in the wash. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, we won't lose it in the wash. I'm going to swap these out real quick here. Put this one back over here. If you guys want to see any of these other products, again, let me know. So again, this is the USB type C. This is 256 gigs. It's the biggest that they make in this size. And we're going to go take a look at it on Amazon. Give me one second. We'll pull that up. So we're going to look at my page. Now, I gave you a few options here. We're on the third product. I'm, there's a lot more products here that I'm actually going to have time to show you tonight. So I'm going to skip through a bunch of these. But these first three products are great for PC backup. They're all less than 50 bucks. This one's going to be great for backing up a PC or a MacBook at 29 bucks, And it's the highest storage. So... You know, if you saw the Samsung Fit, that's really small, very durable, very fast. This one's not as fast as that, even though it's 3.1. Um, but let me show you the trick on this one. I can take it and I can put it in the bottom of my Android phone. Now, I didn't hit anything on the screen, but it popped up there. And there is my SanDisk drive. And it's going to give me options to go back it up. Now you can hit that backup now button. I'm trying to do this backwards and upside down. So it's got a backup in there. It's telling me, I'm going to say do a manual backup. And there is my 6.06 .06 megs of photos, music, videos, documents, and contacts. Android is much better for backing up your entire phone. Uh, iPhone is going to be contacts and photos. It's not going to do text messages on the, the duo link. This one will do all the stuff that's available and you can use it as regular storage. So I'm taking a look real quick at the chat, make sure I didn't miss anything. Yes, man, we got a lot of Unraid people in here. <laughs> it's just funny because I advertise this show in a, a group. Uh, <laughs> it's craft computing. What should I say? Uh, he's got a great YouTube channel. He's got a lot of home labbers in there, but he does not like Unraid. And so I was kind of given some, some hard time about it. But again, uh, to each their own, Unraid is a really good solution for the right kind of person. So what we're looking at right now, though, is the dual drive USB type C. So it's plugged into the bottom. I'm going to show you over here. That's what it plugs in like. Really, really simple. And it's downloaded all my photos and items. So then I can do exactly what I did with the other one. I take it out. Super duper simple. I'm going to switch sides because I do have type C and USB three on this, this laptop. I'm going to switch sides. And actually I thought about doing this. I'm just going to give you guys like a down view here and I'm literally going to mess up and put it in an upside down. No, I'm going to put it in that same USB port. And then the computer is saying, okay, I see something in drive F. Now I've been unplugging and unplugging and unplugging. I'm going to let it fix it real quick. <laughs> so it's going to fix that drive real quick and then it's going to pull it up. And that can happen if you're not properly safely ejecting things, but it's okay. We're still here. Uh, but if you go into memory zone, now this is the app that I was showing you. It's created a photos folder. There's pictures, screenshots. Now, I really wanted to show you guys these screenshots here because this was screenshots that I took on my Android phone. So these are files that were on my Android phone. This is the installation process and the setup of the SanDisk memory zone software. What's cool about this though, is it actually has cloud capabilities. So I think it can, and I haven't looked at the software deeply enough, but I think it can actually back this up to the cloud. So there's a, a thing you can Google. It's called the three, two, one rule of backups. 
you want three copies of everything. So even your phone is considered one copy. So you want one copy here, possibly one copy on a USB and one copy maybe in the cloud. So that's a foolproof way to keep those pictures, documents, text messages, emails safe. And then you want them in at least two formats, which you've done with the uh, USB. And you want one of those to be in your house. <laughs> so that totally qualifies to be in the cloud. So that's awesome. That's the three, two, one backup rule. But in this case, you know, again, super easy to install. You have to do a couple permissions things. It's Android, right? And then it runs through the app and it works really well. And that was my screenshots. Go back up here. I've got my WiseCam V3 folder, and it's got my snapshot of my backyard that I took earlier today. So you can see that it is successfully backing up the files off of the phone. Again, no data plan required. So if you've got a kid that maybe just has Wi-Fi, don't need a, a data plan. I still recommend OneDrive, and I still recommend Google and all these other places for a cloud backup. But you know what? With all the, the ransomware and other stuff going on, multiple backups is a good plan. Uh, honestly, if Google Drive went down, you know, a lot of people would not be able to get to their files anymore and their phones and other stuff. So I always consider having a local backup critical, even if you have a cloud backup solution. And as we'll talk about later, RAID is not counted as a backup in that. <laughs> so that's just another storage location. So I went through the three different storage devices. This one is the dual drive USB type C from SanDisk. Let me pull that up here again on the side so you guys can see this one. Super small. It's one of the cheapest of the ones that I've been showing today. That's what I like. So it's very affordable. 256 gigs. I believe it's $28.99 really good if you're on android it doesn't have the micro usb so if you're on a usb micro sorry there are some in amazon i didn't have a device i've got a couple tablets maybe that use that i didn't have one that absolutely needed that so uh, i didn't put that in the show but like we said really cool device here it's not going to let you charge because it can only have one connection at a time so in this case, we'll take a quick look at some of the other pictures, and then I'm going to check the Amazon chat. But that's what I was telling you about, this cool idea of a double-ended item here. And uh, welcome, Seahawks. Uh, you are entered. Um, and JC says she won a monitor stand. Absolutely, that's awesome. And Dave Frank, welcome. Do you prefer a drive over an external hard drive or both? And RJ wants to enter... Okay, we'll get you in there. <laughs> I'm going to do my best here. No, I've got a lot of late entries. It might take me to do a pause for one second while we put some new entries in here. Uh, the rules, I don't have them available on the giveaway, but email john at thenetguy.com, subject Emma. You'll be entered for this. If you entered for the first drawing, you're automatically entered for this one. If you didn't win, if you weren't Kim who won that drawing, that was awesome. Um, just found out their USB drives with dual sized ends, micro one and standard on the other. There you go. So some really cool chat going on. Love to see that here. And again, really cool device made by Sandus. So if you're going to go out and buy stuff, I just want to point this out to you. Um, I do a lot of windows installations and I need a lot of like 32, well, eight, 16, 32 gig USBs. And I buy these cheap ones. And I buy these cheap ones for that purpose only because if they fail, I can download Windows again. And I know right away. If you're buying hardware for backup, go with a name brand. Go with a SanDisk. Go with a PNY. Go with a Samsung. Go with somebody that is going to be there next time. I've tried TrueNAS, but I just prefer Unraid. Oh, man, this is, this is like a support group. Uh, I tell you, i got to pull some of these up here and get them in trouble later. I think you should screenshot this. Hardware pass-through is a breeze. That's coming from T-Dolts. And I tried TrueNAS. I just prefer Unraid. Well, I do too. So, and Josh, uh, sorry you're late here too. <laughs> Welcome to the show. And we'll go there. Um, so let's do the drawing. Give me just a couple seconds here. If you have questions in the chat, kind of getting ready here for the next thing. Um, if you have questions, feel free to shoot them off in the chat. I will be able to go back to any product we need. And I'm going to check and make sure I have everybody added here. Give me one second. I saw a Randy J, so I'm going to get you added to the drawing here. Okay. And Randy J, 
Seahawk. And just make sure that you send me that email, you guys, so that I can get a hold of you if you win. So Seahawk 15, 14. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I've always wanted to do the drawings offline just because of this reason. But online is good, and I do not want you to miss out on this. Mariah Briggs, thank you for uh, checking in on Amazon. Just give me a follow if you can on Amazon, and then send me an email to john at the netguy.com, and the name is going to be Emma. Actually, because we're doing this drawing, let me pull the Emma out because she's awesome. And I'm going to get this out here, and you can take a look at it. We'll show you what you're actually winning. If you missed last week's show, this thing is just awesome. So it is a pet vacuum cleaner. Well, it doesn't vacuum your pets, but uh, no, it actually vacuums up pet hair. It's a regular robot vacuum. There's no cameras in it like the other ones I've shown you, which are cool too. Uh, but Trifo has really made kind of a continuum of vacuums. This is kind of their mid-range. It's got really good suction. I can show you the back side of it here real quick. So there's some of the things up. The smart navigation it has. The ability to go under couches, this thing's like 3.34, don't quote me on that, but I think it's 3.34 or 3.7 inches uh, tall. It's going to pick up cat litter. It's going to pick up dog hair. It's going to get your house clean. Now, last week I had a promo code on it. I think you could take a look at uh, Tech on Tuesday number 7 because I don't have those available right now to me. That might still be good. I think it was good till the 8th. So if it's still good, you may be able to get a really smoking deal on this thing this is under 200 dollars, so it's a great one we're going to do the drawing real quick and get this thing out of here to a lucky owner and i'm going to go over here and just look to make sure and got that so yeah a um, couple things about that question earlier about usb versus usb hard drive the small ones are a lot easier to use you don't have to plug them in in many cases there are some five terabytes that you can plug in I do have some USB hard drives I'm going to show you. If you have a permanent computer that are a great option, and they even have more than just hard drive capability, which is primo. I like that. So I'm going to get these folks dialed in here, and we are ready for the drawing. <laughs> Who's ready for the drawing in the, the chats here? So this is a drawing, again, sponsored by the Trifo Company. They are a maker of robot vacuums. It's Trifo Robotics, actually, is the company really easy to set up super easy to use very functional you know um, the one i want to show you and it's going to be in the next few weeks is the lucy it has dual cameras a lot of the same pet features it is their mega top of the line and i'm going to give that one away too so super happy to do that for trifo they make a great product here uh, like i said really easy to use and you can see the bottom of it there this is the the spinning auger that it has has these wheels that <laughs> <laughs> go over up to a three-quarter inch obstacle uh, but again from the trifo company so without further ado we are ready <laughs> and you know what i want to double see there's a couple options here that i need to set up wheel settings <laughs> number of seconds for the wheel to spin we're going up on that <laughs> oh, i love it okay I, I really wish that the audio goes through let me see if i can get the audio to go through okay I'm down. <laughs> I don't know how loud it's going to be, but we're going to try this. And if this blows up, um, I'm sorry. There's the spinning wheel. Are you guys ready? In three, two, one. We're doing the spinning wheel. Wheel is spinning. It's slowing down. It's slowing down. It's slowing down. Oh, RJ. Oh, no. <laughs> it's slowing down. Jim B, I think, is going to be the one. Jim B is the one. Tina, thank you for joining here. I see that. That's awesome, you guys. Uh, thank you. And Jim B, you have won the Emma Pet Robot Vacuum. That is super awesome. I will get that shipped out to you uh, so that you can use that here very soon. I'm actually going to do a show of all three vacuums soon so you guys get to see them. Is a vacuum tech absolutely these things are smart they've got an app i'm totally down with that and thank you again to the trifo company for sponsoring this giveaway i couldn't give away a vacuum a week if i wanted to uh with what they pay on amazon so jim b you're going to be super happy about that i will follow up with you and let you know more about that i'm going to put some of these products out of the way so that we can get some room here because i want to talk about another solution 
So we said there's that three, two, one backup concept where you got three copies of something, two different media types, one of them being offsite, OneDrive. Now, <laughs> I've always used to tell people Google Drive, Google Photos, Google whatever. OneDrive has come a very long way in both business and its ability to work for home. Now, there's three different versions of it here. I'm going to talk real briefly about the personal edition of OneDrive. So let me pull that up here on Amazon so you guys can see this. This is the cheapest option. If you're looking for Amazon sells licenses for both business and family and personal, personal is $59, so $58.99 per year. This is a digital download. So OneDrive, I believe, and I've actually got the comparison up here, will give you five gigabytes. This is the comparison. I'll get myself out of the way for a sec. This is what your different choices are. So regular one gig, uh, sorry, regular OneDrive comes with five gigs of storage with your computer. Now, for a long time, I was just paying that middle tier, the $1.99 a month tier, because I wanted to, to have a little bit of additional storage for my business. And I was able to do that under a personal plan. Then you do this enough, you end up needing more space and one terabyte for $7 a month plus an additional uh, feature here, which is you get full access to desktop versions of PowerPoint, Word, Excel, Outlook, the best email client out there, um, and OneDrive. You get all that storage. You get some productivity tools and some neat stuff. Now, if you go to the next one, and I'm going to hit that here now. If you're just joining, by the way, this is John the Net Guy. This is death, taxes, and data loss. I'm going to help you at least with one, maybe two of these today. <laughs> if you haven't already, give me a follow down there or there, wherever it's at. But we're going over backup solutions. We did some stuff about backing up your computer. We did some stuff about backing up your phone and other devices. Now we're just talking about OneDrive. So I'm not a big fan of subscription services, to be honest. But this is one that actually works for our family. So I've got young girls, daughters and an older stepson that went off to the coast guard you guys met him uh on the other <laughs> day when we did the coast guard build but if you go in here to microsoft family safety this is something you get with the family edition so it's only i believe a couple dollars more a month if you're looking at the monthly fee microsoft this is the uh, personal one available at amazon for 58.99 which is a fantastic deal if you go to the other screen and divide that amazon's got it cheaper Plus a lot of these, when you go to register them, will let you get about 15 months. So you get that one year plus a little bump usually when you go to register it. I'm going to show you the family one. Now this is $92.95 a year if you get it on Amazon. You can get it right from there. And one of the really cool things about this one is it comes with that family safety. So family safety, when you have this, is going to give you a lot of those features, whether you're on iPhone or Android, like find my child, where are they at? Another couple things, maybe, uh, hopefully she's not listening, <laughs> you know, our 14 year old, she's into anime, you know, a couple times she's searching up anime and gets misdirected into a site. It will block those sites. So it's got parenting controls and other real things. So not only do you get the one terabyte of storage, which is really cool with both the personal and the family plan. Another cool thing you get is that family safety. And then on top of that, they actually allow you with the um, family safety to get a terabyte per person so you see best value here it says up to six terabytes so you're going to get a terabyte per person and a copy of full microsoft office for kids in school kids that don't need to open word documents maybe they're learning excel hopefully <laughs> and it the term family can be used very loosely here i can i know a lot of families that are extended and around the country and uh, maybe questionably related but you know you can split this up the cost is minimal and you do it awesome. And uh, our friend Zachary says that he does the family bundle through Amazon. And absolutely, that's a great deal. So that's a Microsoft 365 family. If you are a business, there is a business version of this. I just pulled it up on the carousel. So you can go into the 365 business here. Again, really hard time keeping all this stuff in stock. I added this, it was in stock, you could buy it, it moved. So if you go into my Amazon shop, you can see that this business standard is 135. Now you can go through and see all the differences on a lot of these. Um, a lot of times it's going to be very, very minor. I know a lot of people that use the family version for their small business. So 
I can't tell you yes or no. Uh, the nice thing about this one is with additional paid licenses, you can get up to 300 people. So maybe you do have a small business with 12 seats. You can add additional licenses to this one, but it's all available from Amazon. I wanted to show you that as a download option. Now, um, let me see if I can <laughs> show you a little bit about how I use OneDrive. I just want to sanitize my OneDrive attachments here. <laughs> no, not a problem at all. So yeah, I actually keep a OneDrive and I keep it fairly used and I can share files with other people. I can send data back and forth. If I do a video, I've done a couple paid videos for people. Um, there's some really cool ones if I <laughs> post them soon and, you know, I will send them files over OneDrive because I can get up that terabyte of storage and it doesn't cost me anything. So really, really cool options. Google is starting to charge for their storage. Google photos used to be free. Google Gmail was like unlimited and then it was limited and then it was lower and lower and lower. And yeah. Yeah. So if you're running into that, this OneDrive is a really cool option to take a look at. And it works on your phones as well. So not only on your PC, can you access your photos and can you back things up? Again, this is about data storage and backup, but you can actually use this to back up your phone to the cloud and your cloud to the PC and vice versa. You can access all the files on your PC from the Microsoft OneDrive cloud. So super cool product here. Really do like that. Again, that is another backup option. I wanted to give you all the options that are available to you. We're gonna shift gears though because we're going to answer that question earlier about what if I need a, a backup hard drive and backup hard drives are slow. <laughs> they're usually noisy <laughs> and they're absolutely necessary. If you need lowest cost for storage that can be turned off and unplugged and continue to keep those data bits. So a lot of times USBs memories, and, and even I'll show you over here. I keep in the uh, <laughs> thing, the vault. This is, I won't tell the, brand but you might be able to guess it but just by looking at the chips this is an ssd and all that is is a bunch of memory and not filled in on this because this is not a huge one but that's a bunch of memory and from a company you might be able to read that <laughs> and it failed so you know this type of memory can fail the magnetic media and a hard drive can also fail you're getting somewhere between three and five years on these backblaze said and this is going to be really important when we go to the next stage and we're talking about my Unraid and how I use Unraid as a solution for backup for large volumes. But just wanted to point that out that you can get these will be a good backup solution, but they're only for backup. In my opinion, I wouldn't use an external drive continuously. Now, this is one of my favorites and finding one in stock on Amazon was like finding something, but I can't say on Amazon. <laughs> Let me show you real quick on this, what it is. This is the Seagate Backup Plus Hub. Now, if you're starving like me for USB ports all the time, I think they could make a computer that's all USB ports. Kren's got good eyes. <laughs> this is that device here. I'll bring it down so you can see it. So this is what it comes in, this big box. This is an eight terabyte one. I haven't opened this one. And why? Because I got three of these already. Now, this one is eight terabytes, but it has that on the front. On the back, you have power and the USB 3 flat connector. Now, this one is surprisingly hollow because, as you can guess, this one's been shucked. That's the technical term, I think. It's shucking. That's like an oyster term, I think. But I've taken the hard drive out of this and I put it in my server because you can buy these cheaper than you can buy drives for servers. Now, there's shingled magnetic recording and CMR drives. <laughs> we will get into that because I don't want to confuse anybody, but these can be really, really useful and very beneficial if you want a lot of storage and you want it cheap. So again, trying to make two copies of something on your, at your house and maybe one in the cloud. This is really good for that second copy. Now I have a 14 terabyte one tucked under my, my Mac here. So as I do my footage on my Mac, I have a scratch disc, which I do the footage. It sends it to the Unraid. This thing normally lives in an outbuilding that I have with a one gig connection. And then it gets backed back up over here. So I've got, again, the copy that I'm working on. I put it in for archive for long term. And then the backup of it is one of these under my Mac. Now this works on Mac or PC. I don't remember if this one actually has the NTFS driver, but that was something that um, if you ever need a, an NTFS driver for Mac, this one comes with it so you can open other PC drives which it looks like it says use between Mac and PC. So I'm guessing this one is, and this is the eight terabyte version. So that's what we brought up here in the carousel. 
Oh, and one that I almost forgot. Thank you, Dave Frank, in the chat uh, for bringing this up, which is the Amazon Prime. So if you're already paying for Amazon Prime, you're getting the free music, you're getting the free shipping and all that capabilities. If you're paying for Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Photos is like one of the last known cheap free photo saving and sharing websites they're really having a hard time <laughs> to broadcast it but that's another great backup option if you can't afford google and you can't afford onedrive you can't afford usb keys and you're already paying for prime you make sure you install the amazon prime photos app on your phone and you can store that so again really cool devices and when i say i got a stack of them <laughs> That's the, uh, the, the boneyard I call it here. And that's all the, the drive. So I got this one, that one, a couple others hidden around here. And, and that's because of one of the next things, which is going to be cheap storage, right? So this is a Seagate backup plus, but a lot of times you're going to need hard drives, right? So one of my favorite cheap storage devices here, and I'm going to pull it up on Amazon so you can see it. I got a variety of these picked out here and I put them in the tech on Tuesday. So we're going to talk about network storage devices here in a second. I was just showing you these two models here and pick the size that's appropriate for you. Again, your computer, if it's a one terabyte computer and you're getting full, you may want to pick something that's a little bit bigger. Um, if you're sharing it on multiple computers or you want multiple versions of a backup, you can do that way. So lots of really great options here, but one of my favorite drives, and it's kind of a, a guilty pleasure and I shouldn't say this, but is this four terabyte X corporate server drive. They're only 4988 here. I've got them pulled up on the carousel and these things are not SMR drive. So you're going to hear SMR and CMR. Just remember the thing you don't want is an SMR drive. Now, most of the ones I've been shucking of these lately of the backup plus hubs have actually been the lower performing SMR drives. Whereas these ones, they may not last as long, but the price per terabyte is low and they have a five-year warranty. And I think they've baked into the cost that these machine, these drives are going to fail and they're just going to replace them. So make sure you keep all of the packaging for these so that you can replace them as needed. And if you have shucked your large hard drive for another project, you can put a different drive, one of maybe one of these cheaper ones in the Seagate. So that's another trick here. You can reuse that. And the cool part with having those two ports on the front is you can attach additional drives. Uh, my iMac only has four USB threes, but I have hub after hub after hub, and it's really, really sweet. So there we go. Uh, checking on the Amazon chat. So I'm going to go to the next device, which I think is just wicked cool, which is the Synology. Now we went through some of the basics, right? We talked about USB keys as backups. We went into the backup storage drives with the backup plus hub. We talked about the cloud. These next two little devices are some of my favorites for non-technical people or even super technical people that don't want to be hands-on if you don't want to be rebuilding your zfs array and you know managing and patching and doing all that stuff to your machine constantly this is a great solution and that is from the synology company now the price on this again keeps changing this is out of stock yet again and so this is the one i have now i have actually lots of these deployed our church uses this actually so our church uses a Synology to back up our weekly services in addition to OneDrive. So again, two copies, one is on the, the actual media machine that we stream from, one goes into the Synology, and then it goes to OneDrive as well. So we have three copies of every weekly service that we can go back to. And what's slick about this device is this is, consider this your own private Google. <laughs> You can do so much with these devices. Beautiful packaging here. I just want to show you what they look like in the package here. So again, you're paying for not only the quality of the hardware, which has been really good. I have very, very few. If anything, I've replaced a couple power supplies on these. And honestly, I went with some aftermarket ones. But that's the device right there. It's got some lights, indicator lights here. It will make noise if there's ever a problem. So it will just run. This is something that you could put downstairs in your house and it just runs. Now, this is the 220 Play version or the 220J. You'll see them called that in different years and models. But you can see it has that little button down there. That's the power on off. Now, the front on this one is not removable. That's the thing to remember. So um, if you buy the more expensive Synologies, 
Like our church, we did have a hard drive go bad in that Synology recently. And guess what? We lost nothing. Nothing happened at all. I was going there for a, a men's group night. I pulled the front of the device off. I put a new drive in it that I had sitting around here. It rebuilt it and it kept purring like a kitten. So that's what's cool about this. I'm going to grab a very small screwdriver. <laughs> I'm going to open this thing for you and I'll show you how you set it up. So this one doesn't have removable drives in that sense. So you do have to shut it down, but this is great for ham, uh, family. You can use this as a home server. Oh, I see some, some, we got some Synology, not Synology hate, I would say, but we've got some <laughs> people talking about the QNAPs. Oh, actually QNAPs, not a bad device. I have not had personal experience with them. I cannot get away from the Synology operating system because it was called disk station manager dsm again the software is what just sells this for me and the ease of use so this is the the synology 220 j opened up for you so you can see that's the fan so it's got active cooling for your hard drives which is really important again your backup plus no active cooling for that that eight terabytes if you put two eight terabyte drives in this thing they're going to mirror each other and <laughs> trick of the trade uh, raid zero is an o raid one it looks like an i for mirror that's how i always remember them so when you're picking your raid modes if you're into that stuff um, that's how i remember raid one is is mirroring this has also synology hybrid raid and what's cool about that is let's say you've got a four terabyte and a two terabyte drive that's all you got you got some spare drives thrown there you put them in here it's going to be a two terabyte raid one which means that the drives back each other up which is really sweet but if you get another four terabyte, you can swap out that other drive, the smaller of the two, and now you double your storage. That's a Synology uh, feature. There's a technical, you know, different platform behind it, but versus a regular RAID where you have to rebuild everything and you can't resize easily, that's the Synology hybrid RAID. So you would put your drives in here. Again, super, super easy. So if you're somebody that doesn't like to tinker with hardware often, you don't think you're going to be swapping stuff out constantly, I should put this down. The Synology NAS devices are just awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this back on. I'm going to pull it back past this. We close it. I'm going to put it back down and I'm going to put those two screws back in. Now it does have a gigabit LAN port. So you're going to get the full 110, 115 megabytes. I only run gigabit here. I know a lot of the guys use that um, hot swap. No on this one, because you have to take it apart unless you're really gutsy. You could probably hot swap on this one. It's not a hardware thing. Uh, you can hot swap, I'm sure. But the um, DS220 Plus, which is also in the carousel, I just pulled it up, is hot swappable. And this, it's $300 investment, but you get it in the software. It's really, really slick. I'm going to see if I can pull up something real quick for you guys. And I'm going to log in and log out just to make sure that I can get it right. Because I want to demo that really cool piece of software that comes with it. Now, it comes with a charger. Um, not charger, sorry. It comes with a AC power brick and I believe a net cable. Sorry, let me make sure I just give you give it to you straight here. So we've got AC adapter, network cable, screws and mounts for your drives if you need them, and the other side of the power cable. So you get everything you need except the drives. And again, those Hitachi Global Storage 4. So if this is 219 for this one, you could add you know, two, four terabyte drives and you'd have four terabytes of redundant storage. Now RAID is not a backup, but your RAID is definitely for data protection. So if your backup is on a RAID, that's a good sign. And the reason that they say RAID is not a backup, well, many reasons is like, if you got ransomware, then you're just writing ransomware to two drives at the same time. So, you know, the RAID is very good for data protection. So this is again, the DS220 play really, really cool. Uh, I'm going to go over and show you just disk station manager. So this is again, my church's backup drive and we're not showing you passwords. <laughs> so this is the one I replaced the other day. Um, I got a notification that the drive has been having some bad sectors. I log in and this is that gorgeous UI that they have. It looks like a desktop app. Now there's my volume management here, the system health, the resources of the system, who's connected and it looks like its own operating system. And what's cool about this is you can install Plex Media Server. Now, the Play doesn't have a lot of extra <laughs> performance, so 
I would encode your videos to the, the quality that you want. If you're going to do Plex or anything like that, um, the 220 plus is a lot better. You can install a pie hole, which sounds kind of weird, but it's a DNS thing. So when you're using your phone or other devices on your network, it can actually do ad blocking DNS server in there. And so you can do that with your routers and other cool stuff. Just the thing that's really, really cool about it in general is the file storage. So this, as I mentioned, we had the different services. These are our services that we have here, our Easter service. A lot of our two, uh, 2020 services are all in here and they're saved. And I know that they're saved on two drives at the same time. And they're very, very safe. So that's Synology. Now what's slick about this is you can add in users. You can add in the surveillance station. So if I go over to packages and I want this thing to do more for me, I can go in there and I can tell it that I want the Synology cloud backup. That's the glacier backup here. And that will back up into the AWS cloud. So I'm getting those three pieces. I've got my PC, I've got my Synology, <laughs> and then I've got my cloud backup. So that's really cool. It does have hyper backup and hyper backup vault. Now I have another uh, painting company that I help with their IT and they've been using this for an offline solution for years now. They don't have very good internet. Again, back where we're going, we're talking to like, I think they're at five megabit now, which is, is huge for them, but really, really poor for cloud. And we use the Synology hyper backup, a wireless link up to their house, which is like a quarter mile away and the backup vault on another Synology in a pair so that they can back up all of their customers and they have not lost a file in years and it's all because they're safely saved on these things so it's really cool these are the basic packages you can put your stuff on there they've got lots of features in here proxy servers vpns maybe you want to run your own vpn um, that's really cool the other thing is you'll see this quick connect.2 address up here which i'll change after the show today so we don't have to worry about you guys whacking at this thing um, but you know that gives you remote access to it. There are phone apps that you can access your files on. So as a backup solution, if you want something that's better than an external hard drive, gives you more data protection than an external hard drive, and is a little bit nerdier, then you can do that. Now, another cool thing is this does have USB ports on the back. The DS220 has USB on the front. If you're like a photographer, um, or maybe you used that device that we showed earlier, the PNY, you plug that into the front or rear of this one. And depending on how you have it set up, you can have it automatically back up that file to this station. So if you're really paranoid, these things are just amazingly powerful. And then you got to go to beta packages, but you can see there's some other stuff in there. There's a surveillance station. They've got their own version of office, their own office suite. And then they've got the Plex media server. So really, really slick little product, easy to set up. If you're not super tech savvy, it walks you through it from the point that you install it. So I'm going to catch up on the chat super quick here. And as I do that, I'm going to come back out here, see if there's any questions that I can point on. And I'm going to go look in here. They have some custom control and scheduling and I fixed my raid more than once with MDM admin. Yep. So the real nerdy people know how to do the good stuff. So, um, but this again, very easy to use, simple to install consumer level, but really great in a small business environment. Now this is a two drive version. They sell a four drive version. That's what I started with, with Synology. I had a, a DS414. They make a six disc, eight disc. They make ones that that chain discs in other cabinets. So Synology is definitely an interesting company. I don't normally use their routers, but I would love to get more experience with those products. Um, but the DS220J in this case is the most affordable version of that that gets your data backed up safely. Now you can do encryption as well on these. So it does have the ability to encrypt. If you're gonna do encryption because you're worried about that, make sure you do it with the DS220 Plus. That's got a faster chip and it's gonna encrypt better. So. That was the disk station manager, and that was Synology. I'll give you a quick tour one more time. So this is the Synology 2-Bay. That's the one I, I have in stock here that I was showing you. That's my personal one to play around with. I'll probably do a more detailed video. Dead simple, super easy backup, especially if you're in a low bandwidth scenario. And the disk station manager is really where it's at. And like I said, they have four disk version and six disk versions of this. So if you've got a lot of drives or you want to make even more storage or you want more redundancy, there's a lot of really cool ones there. So that's a Synology. And then I'm going to go back one page 
and I'm going to show you the black one, and that's the biggest way to tell the difference on the uh, cheaper 2 gigabyte play versions. And that is this front has that really nice looking bezel, and that bezel will pop off and there will be removable drives. It also has dual network interfaces, so you can do some routing and stuff there. There's your two ports, or if you have a bad network cable, let's say, that could be another situation. It can actually switch to use both or do link aggregation, so you can do both. All nerdy stuff, I know. We're getting into the nerdy part of the show, guys. Sorry, i got to pre-warn you here. And if you're just joining, this is John the Net Guy. We're taking a look at death, taxes, and data loss. I'm helping you with one, maybe two of those things if your taxes are stored on a computer, which most are. And uh, today I've shown you products that will back up your PC, that will back up your phone, back up things to the cloud. We backed up things to external drives, and we're looking at some more business-friendly or maybe heavier-duty stuff. And we're about to switch off to the really nerdy stuff here. So I'm just showing you the, the DS220 Plus. This is my favorite toe dip in the pool for Synology. And again, the software is what kills it here. This is just a great deal. Um, I would pay 300 bucks in a heartbeat for one of these if I needed that performance that's coming in here. And the prices do go up as you go higher. Again, this is a 720 here, for example. Now, there's not going to be seven drive bays, but it's actually expandable in the back on these they have a connector that can actually connect multiple additional externals so very different options for every kind of configuration you can imagine and they support usually up to 16 terabyte or larger actual drives in there so that's pretty cool let me take a quick gander at all the chats here and we're going to see one time <laughs> oh yeah Cran, he's calling me a nerd. Fair enough. Yeah, we're getting into the nerdy stuff here. Um, so we talked about the Synology. There are drives that go in these. Now, I want to show you just a couple of my favorite drives. If you've used these drives, call them out in the chat. I'm going to pull them up. And if you guys are wondering, hey, John, how do I follow you? In the lower left corner is the URL for my Amazon shop. If you go here, I have all of the previous Tech on Tuesdays that we're doing with all the cool nerdy computer stuff and other things. So you can see all of that, my Coast Guard gaming build, some TP-Link Omada gear. I get a very small commission if you purchase from these links. So really do appreciate that. The wife appreciates that. Our outdoor furniture appreciates that. Actually, she really wants outdoor furniture, and it's looking more like a lawn chair at this point. So honestly, I'm hoping this, this Amazon Live thing pays off. But there's the $50 4 terabyte renewed hitachi global storage that's not a, an smr drive so while these other backup pluses may have smr drives in them you're guaranteed if you look at the the ones here that they're not now um, the seagate iron wolf nas edition is also not but it's more expensive so you see here two of these would make a hundred dollars for eight terabytes this one starts at 180 so that's the seagate iron wolf now used all of these this is really a good drive there are different sizes that you can get so you just go down here to capacity i want to look at what the four terabytes going for so actually it's a great deal right now um 23 off so it is 85 dollars. so you can see you're saving about 30 40 percent if you go with the hitachi in there and then they have other different they have ssd versions of that the only thing i would say is stay away from the three terabytes uh jeff from craft computing has a whole great video series on how three terabytes has not been a good size and then another one that's kind of a recent up and comer i would love to hear from you guys in the chat the big nerds that are in the chats right now that have used these uh christian gear thank you so much for the follow on amazon you're going to get notified each and every time i go live i really do appreciate that um, so if you're one of the big nerds in the chat right now, and I'm just tapping away on these different hard drives, give me one second to find that. Oh, you know, I only put the Hitachi Global Storage ones in here. And there's a couple different ones. Take a look. They have different warranty lengths. But I would love to hear what you guys think about the Toshiba NAS drives, these N300s. So this 8 terabytes is a little bit more expensive, but the 6 terabyte, you know, you can see the pricing on these varies uh, pretty wildly. And, you know, I've seen them on sale lower than the NAS, the Iron Wolf. And so I just wonder if uh, any of our people in the chat have had these. And Dave Frank says, I've bought three of the four terabyte Hitachi drives. So he is definitely saving that. Um, I've had maybe one fail, I think, and I've had to replace it. But I'm, I'm used to that. And my configuration is designed so that drives can fail and I can keep moving. So that said, and talking about moving on. Oh, I'm going to have to mute this user. Sorry about that. 
Um, there we go. See you later, buddy. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. You're out of there, bud. So uh, we're going to take a look at my Unraid configuration. And by way of doing that, I'm going to take a look at this case that I bought recently. Now, this case that's coming up here, and I'm going to pull it up on the Amazon while we're here. It's not a new design. Uh, I'll put that out there. And, you know, when I was buying this, I actually talked to a lot of people in the Unraid groups. And I was like, hey, what is a case that's got a ton of drives that has a really good, um, you know, accessibility because I need to get in there and get them out. I'm used to Synologies, right, that make it really easy to get drives in and out. And I want one that's got pretty decent aesthetics. And I came across this thing, and it's just, it's blown my mind the more I use it, how cool this drive, act, or this case actually is. And it's $150.24 right now, but you're getting a ton of value because what I didn't think about when I was running these you know five drive six drive arrays is that there's going to be noise associated with them so i'm just pulling this thing out it was literally in use and i will boot it back up when i move it over here and i'm going to show you guys around on this one and so that's my version of it and how i've used it but the cool thing is that room for eight full-size three and a half drives a full-size atx motherboard 140 millimeter fans you can do water cooling if you wanted the drive bays come out if you're only using a few drives or maybe you've got um i've got some adapters that can you know stack doubles so you could put a couple two and a half inch drives in each tray um, you can do all that kind of stuff but the thing that i didn't really notice until i looked in this was actually their vent system and the every panel on this thing that i've seen actually has really really cool sound deadening and so that sound is a lot better we're going to take a look at this so this is the side of the case and what's neat about this is it's tool free design so i'm opening the side with just a lever now first thing i'm going to show you is the back side of this you can take off and put another fan on the side of the case so that's pretty cool and then we're going to do the big reveal now this is my unraid setup it is actually <laughs> uh it's not the biggest in the world but it works for me right okay don't don't snapshot that or whatever <laughs> but there are one two three eight terabyte drives in here and two four terabyte drives and those are all in order and i can also i haven't put stickers on them yet but i'm about to because they are in order in my unraid and i can go in there and if i have a drive failure i can pull this out and i can pull it forward now these are not hot swap I got to point that out real quick. They're not going to be like you can swap them out like you can on some of these Dell servers that we rebuild. Now I'm going around to the back of this and I'm taking just two thumb screws and they're captivated nuts. So you're not going to drop them. And I'm going to take the back off of this. Now you notice that there's a lot of support in here and structure. It's built really well. But guess what? You also have that sound deadening here. So really cool. If somebody else has that. <laughs> oh, Cran. I'm glad this isn't being recorded. So yeah, if somebody else has this case or has had it in the past in the chat, let me know what you thought about it. Uh, this is not new to me. I've had it for a while, but um, I'm, the more I'm using it, the more I'm liking this case. It's working better and better. And I found my USB 2 header that I didn't plug in last night. <laughs> oh, I wonder why that wasn't working. Let me go ahead and plug that in down there. Yeah, I did, did some re-wiring uh, of this last night just to make it look clean. So again, looking inside of this, super easy to work on. Tons of room because obviously it's an ATX. Um, 140 millimeter fan. There's a fan up front here I want to show you too. And the front bezel on this, the other cool thing about it is it's movable. I just grabbed the wrong side. To the other side. So if your configuration is up against a wall like mine was, and I wanted to have it open the other way, you can just change the hinges on here, top and bottom. And then now you have a server that faces the other way and opens. You can pull this down. Now, complaint or not, you could take the other 140 and put it down here. There's enough room, but it only has one front fan. But what I love about this is this is where all my drives are. And if you guys have ever <laughs> been setting these up, these drives make a lot of heat. So when you're reading and writing from the drives, now Unraid's really cool in that it only reads and writes from the drives that it needs to. And because it's not a RAID, it's not involving all the drives. It's just the drive and the parity that you can actually lower the heat overall with just a few settings. 
but I love that it's blowing directly on the drives. And now other server cases will do a push pull, you know, pull through design. This case works really, really well. I'm going to move it a little bit and talk some more about some things here. Uh, how much space is there for the front fan to intake? Actually, Josh, this is a good question. He's one of my friends over there. I'm just going to show you this, and then I'll come back to the front and completely answer that question for you. So what I wanted to point out here is that we're looking at this. So those are my power cables from my power supply. And actually, he says, I'd put a blank in the lower fan hole not to run, so zero recirculation. Absolutely. That's a great idea. I didn't even think of that. Um, and then there's my SATA connectors. Now, you could do some other cool stuff, and they sell them on Amazon. Um, but then you have these LSI cards. So you could throw an LSI card in and here is a four SATA drive breakout. I haven't done this yet, but I had six SATA ports on my motherboard. It's an old mining motherboard. <laughs> so it actually worked really well. It's got a ton of PCI, uh, E slots as well as a ton of SATA drive ports. And so, um, that worked out. So I, I ran them all to there and other cool things. And I got to get my mug out of here. <laughs> This is the SATA drive connector. So you can just screw them in real quick, unscrew them as you wish. And that is my cache drive for my Unraid. So let's pull this thing around back to the front here. And I'll put that fan back in. I, I'm not going to put any fans in while it's running because I already got burned one time on one of my other shows. <laughs> we were doing a PC build, if you guys remember, and I took a blade off <laughs> the fan by putting it on wrong. But what, uh, Josh was talking about there is putting a blank in the lower, and I think they must have one extra in here, I'm guessing, and I just haven't seen it. So I'm going to pull this over to the side. I'm going to go back out to the full view. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you, I'm going to boot up my Unraid. I need a power cable. This is a working place here. Normally I would put this into a UPS. Thank you, Zachary, yet again for that UPS that you gave me in the other room. And uh, that would work really, really well because this, while this is not a backup, you definitely want to have backup power when you're running this many drives. Now, a lot of people will run all of this stuff headless. So you're not even going to plug it into a PC. Some people can take this case with Unraid and actually run their PC as a VM inside of Unraid. Now, mine automatically turns on or should. Yep, it's already spinning. So it's booting up right now. And if I was smart, I could pull this over and see if it will initialize the video. There it is. So there's my Unraid booting up. And actually, if I had a keyboard, that would have been really smart. <laughs> I could have actually got it into GUI mode and we could have just done it all from here. So this thing's going to boot up right now and it's initializing. It's based on Linux. And, you know, before I get too far and get myself into trouble, <laughs> I am going to have to say goodbye to the Amazon folks. It has been awesome today. We have been checking out tons of data storage and protection stuff. I'm going to go into really nerdy stuff about my Unraid and I'm going to answer questions and stuff, but that's not going to be on Amazon. Um, if you're watching on any of the other services, continue to watch. Don't leave. Uh, we're going to have some fun tonight. And this is my personal Unraid called Core. <laughs> and you can see the IP address down there that is my local network and that's what I connect to and back up all of my footage onto this it's also my Plex media server it's also my unify controller it's doing a lot of, of duties here for me and it's worked really really well but we're taking a look at the fractal design r5 case here and it's been really really good I've uh, been very happy with it so with that said Amazon customers, thank you for following Christian and everybody else that's followed on Amazon. Uh, we're going to continue this awesome party somewhere else. And I will catch you on the next Tech on Tuesday, Amazon folks. But we're going to continue on. So thank you guys for watching. Live video ending. Three, two, one. Okay, so now we can talk about the cool stuff. <laughs> if you wanted to do Unraid, you can Google it. And you can download it. It is very simply an operating system. There is a cost associated with it. I believe it was $60. Last I checked, 59 bucks. And to me, it's worth every penny. Uh, Kren, here we go. We need an extra Kren here. Whoa. Get out of your mates. <laughs> he says freedom. And you know what's really, I, I hate to say this, and I don't want to dog Amazon, but they're 720p on the stream. Now you guys are all going to be like looking and like, oh, why is it 720 
they really don't like 1080. And, and when I go and do a 1080 stream, I'm looking at it going, oh, this is so much better. So I actually do have a recording in 1080, and I'll probably repost this if it's interesting to people. So I'm going to pull up my Unraid login page and my three-character password. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's more than three characters, I think. And we're going to go run it over here. And then I'm going to log into this. I'm just going to show you guys a couple things that I have. Again, we're all within friends here, so don't hack my account. And uh, yes, I use root because every person should not use root. Um, do as I do and not as I say or backwards, something like that. So yeah, this is absolutely my unraid. Now, this is not as huge. And I did put a little shout out on Twitter asking people if they want to, you know, show off their unraids because I've seen some ridiculous size unraids and mine has a total of 24 terabytes of usable space. I'm only using 12.3, but that's growing this show. When I, when I hit stop on this, I'm recording all four cameras at 1080p 60 plus six audio tracks, plus the one that's coming out of OBS. So I make about 200 gigs a week of just show data plus everything else that I'm building. So this Unraid gets used and uh, it's been really, really good. So much so that I actually, when I built my new server, I just bought another license because these guys have done a, I think a great job of making it uh, work. Uh, it says, look on the discord. I don't want to look on the discord. Right now. <laughs> Am I getting myself into trouble? Oh gosh. I just, I can only imagine here. Uh, so yeah, this is my Unraid. Um, as far as the, the screens that it has, really, it's not going to be as super simple to use as the Synology. But if you're somewhat of a nerd, you probably figure this out. I run Docker. So my Docker containers are Plex and Unify. I don't run uh, Pi-hole. And everybody's going to be like, why don't you run Pi-hole? And I don't run Pi-hole because I like to look at slick deals and a few other... <laughs> uh, Oh man, I don't, I want to look in discord right now, but I don't want to get totally flustered. Um, but I don't run Pyle because a couple of the websites that I go to use like forwarding redirects and I, I can't get to the pages when I click on their apps. And so it kind of breaks things for me and I haven't gone through now this chip that I have was actually a giveaway from a friend of mine. He gave me the board and chip and you know, he was doing, uh, like I said, mining with it. I actually have a 6700 in my other case. Let me show you that real quick too. So if you're like, oh, I might want to try Unraid, but I don't have room for $150 and don't reboot on me. Okay, I'm going to move it over so I can show you the other one. Don't reboot on me. <laughs> I pulled the power cord out last night and it was not happy about that, but it came back. So um, if you're like, I don't have money to do the machine and drives and anything, that's total BS. And the reason is this is an HP 800 G2. So this is like your total corporate computer, right? This you'd see everywhere. And you were talking about that Samsung fit. That's my second Unraid license. I'll open this thing up. And one of the reasons I love this thing is for a like super budget Unraid. I got a four port NIC in here because I was going to use this as a router as well. Um, but this drive tray comes out. It has one hard drive here, another full three and a half underneath. And under this drive is another drive bay. I can actually show you that if I go to three here. So yeah, so you're looking at that. And so there's my RAM slots. And then if I switch this up, there's my SSD. So you can get this. I buy these computers for a hundred bucks. And for a hundred bucks, you add 60 for the Unraid license. You can have a three drive Unraid uh, if you don't want to use a cache. <laughs> Or if you want to use a cache, which really is where the performance of Unraid comes into play, if you want to do that, that works really well. But I've been kind of looking at this as another option just to put up in my server rack because it's really small and really easy. The power supply is tiny. It doesn't use a lot of power and it really works well. <laughs> okay. Kren says it's okay. I can, he's posted his Unraid. Now I'm going to have to go over there. We're going to the discord just because we're free of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> only because we're free of Amazon will I open my discord here uh, and I'm not in streamer mode so don't send me anything too funny don't want to get demonetized there's still the possibility of getting demonetized on YouTube <laughs> okay here we go uh, let's see where is the picture of your disc oh uh, I gotta go to the actual show page sorry guys uh, bring it up. 
Ah, oh, okay. That's why you wanted to show off. Don't use three terabyte drives. <laughs> this is all three terabyte drives in here. Is that what I'm seeing? You got a 14 terabyte Unraid. There we go with all three terabyte drives. So what's interesting about Unraid again is it's not RAID. Like total RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, all those things are spinning all of the disks at once. And it took me a while to kind of understand the concept of it. And it actually took my parity drive failing before I figured out what was going on. Okay, so I knew before, but I, I really knew after the parity drive failed. Because my buddy's like, oh yeah, you can fix that. You can swap that out. He goes, and none of your data is gone because it's still stored on the individual drives. And that was really cool. And so I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense now. So it's not RAID, but you can use um, the drives either individually. You can use them, you know, one drive for certain shares, things like that. I'm going to go back over to my shares real quick, just so you guys can kind of see how I've laid out my, my stuff. So if I go to shares, I've got you know, my downloads, my ISOs, I've got ISOs is actually a, de a default one. So if you want to run VMs in here, I've got media, that's where a lot of stuff is. And then I've got net guy and transfer and unify. So if I go to transfer, uh, and actually, let's see what we got in transfer. Anything good tech on Tuesday, number six, there we go. So these are actually some videos and some unboxing. And if you want to see like videos and pictures from the Maxwell robot vacuum. So I use this just as a utility transfer within my own house, because I can share this from devices and all that. That works pretty well. Again, just looking at some other things that I recommend. Um, the Docker containers work really well for me. I use different ones. Obviously I'm using Unify and Plex. Now, uh, my Plex, I need to work on a backup solution because I have enough of those, but that's a whole nother thing. A couple SMRs in there as well. And actually, yeah, if you look at my drives, they're pretty much all SMRs, except I think the last two might not be. So that's one of the things that you got to watch for. So the problem with SMR drives, if you guys will Google it, um, obviously it's shingled magnetic write or recording. Mm. And so they're layered on top of each other, the tracks. And so it can have to rewrite a layer if it's reading something or doing some weird stuff. So again, it was a big, big fiasco here. So there's some stuff moving in and out of it now, because again, it's not going to be a striped raid. You're not going to get the performance like a raid zero or a raid 10 of multiple drive, read multiple drive, write. Then it's going to go slower. It's going to be as fast as your maximum speed of your drive. And if it's rebuilding your array, it's going to be fast as all of your drives, the slowest drive. So if it's doing stuff like that, but I use a cache drive here. So if I'm copying, remember 200 gigs of footage, that's exactly why my cache drive is 256. Cause I can copy my 200 gigs of footage over. It goes into the cache drive. If I pull it back out, it's exactly the same speed and it's completely transparent to those shares. So if I go look at a share, like the net guy use cache pool. Yes. So it moves drives from cache to the array when the mover comes in and the mover is their concept in unraid that it's actually going to move data from the cache on a schedule. I think I run mine hourly, which might be too much, but I, I do like to have stuff in there. Now the data is not protected when it's just on the solo cache drive. So that's another thing is the more frequency that you move things. So I tend to run it more often because I want it to get into the unraid array. <laughs> <laughs> it's there. So, um, wish I could use a cache partition on my SSD instead of having to use the entire drive. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Now, if you could partition it as, as that's a really good idea, friend. Um, and then a couple other things. I don't run any VMs, but, um, there is a Mac in a box VM. You can run a Mac in here with VM, uh, VNC. You can connect to it. So if you want to play around with Mac OS, you can download Mac in a box. That's one of the easiest ways I've ever seen to do that. I do run the community applications plugin, which gives me a lot of other cool stuff and apps that I can look at. And some of my favorite tools, just real quick. Um, if I have a bunch of footage and I want to spread it across drives is actually unbalance. So unbalance is one of those things that I add on. Um, also have backup and restore of my, um, my USB key. So that's important too. So, but unbalanced, and I won't get into that too much, but it's got uh, scatter or gather. So you can move data from several drives. So if you had a share that was stretched across many drives and it's, it's going slower, you could actually pull it all into one. Um, you know, that's the gather. If you want to scatter it across many drives to protect some of the files. So maybe you want your photos spread across several drives. Um, you can do that. Also, when you're setting up your array, 
you can actually go in and I only have a single parity here. And this, these greens are really good because that's a good indication of uh, if the machine's performing well. Um, that's uh, automatic right there. But, you know, you have a single parity. So I can have any one drive fail in this, just like a RAID 1 <laughs> uh, and mirroring and have it work. If it was a RAID 5, that's the same thing. Obviously, one drive failure. Um, but you can do dual parity on this. So you can do some really kind of more advanced things that you would only see in in uh, neat systems. Now, I've lost a cache drive, a parity drive, and a disk because I got boxes of cheap disks that I get out of machines when I upgrade them to SSDs and I'll use them here and there. But, um, when I've had a data drive go, it's emulated it and it worked perfectly. I didn't even know from a storage perspective, that's been great. And so that's been one thing. The cache drive going was bad, uh, cause I didn't have my cache drive being backed up and that was a problem. So again, that's one of the things that you want to have that being backed up, um, if you have anything on it. So a lot of people will put their VMs on the cache drive. That's actually what Kren I think is talking about. There is talking about, uh, setting up windows and Linux VMs. So you can play around with operating systems. You can do this. So it's definitely very nerdy. Uh, I wanted to give you a quick tour of my Unraid before I go take it back. And let me see. Um, <laughs> I should, probably shouldn't do this because people are obviously looking. <laughs> Uh, but I might be able to give you a sky view, an aerial view of my home without showing my address. No, it's going to show my address. Let's see. I won't be able to show that, sadly. Oh, you know what? No, that's not going to show it either. Can I take that off? Oh, there it goes. Okay. Well, we get my coordinates, but you can kind of see what I'll, I'll show you here. So that's my house. Yeah, there's lots of stuff going on there. I ignore that. Um, that's my office studio right here, back deck, and wood workshop over here. And my Unraid usually sits right here. And so I have an underground uh, Cat 6E or whatever run, and then under the crawl space and over the garage and in here. So I have my studio right there. And that's where I get that physical separation. So I have the stuff in here gets sent out to my Unraid, which is in kind of in the winter. It's great. It keeps that warm. And uh, I'm literally thinking of renting out my little woodworking shed to a bunch of miners because I got tons of power in there. And I'm like, go mine in the shed. <laughs> that would be great. And then, you know, keep it warm. And then it's got, you know, Internet access. But I do worry about fire or something or theft. So obviously I actually have this. Um, if this burned down or got stolen, all my stuff's out here. If this burned down or got stolen, all my stuff's in here. Um, and so I've got kind of a cross backup thing going, but wanted to show you that again, uh, between friends here, this has been tech on Tuesday, number eight. This is death taxes and data loss. Hopefully you guys have learned something. If you guys do or watching still on YouTube, uh, would appreciate it. If you do buy something, use those links in the description. They are affiliate links. They give me like a tiny one, two percent, whatever it is now. So I'll make 45 cents on that device that you buy. But that's something and it's really helping out. I'm actually able to buy more hardware and do more videos and get more cameras and do cool stuff and got lots of really cool stuff coming. And congratulations again to Jim B who won the Emma Pet robot vacuum. I got to do one more show with all three vacuums and then I'm going to send this out to you. I'm going to check the chats real quick, make sure that I did not miss anybody or anything too funny. And then I got to go scan the discord and see how much <laughs> I got in trouble. But no, I do appreciate it. And again, I will catch up with you guys in the very next video. Mm -hmm.